Okay, I hope this will work. Uh, this is try 19, I hope, and I think it's the last one. So welcome to the uh, session 2.6, which is about the yield shock with and without market model. So in the previous days, you had uh, several sessions related to data, and I, I think you have a good overview where the yields are coming from and where they are stored in which parameter. So in this exercise, we will uh, play around a bit with scenarios where we will shock the yields and see the, the effect of the uh, interlinkage between the supply and the market model and how it affects agriculture production. So you already know that uh, the yields in Capri are not explicitly endogenous. So this means that uh, it allows the to exogenously shock the yields and run scenarios only with the market model, only, only with the supply model or running scenario without the market model, but also with the market model, which means that they will provoke price changes. So what does that mean? Will the, result, <clears throat> will, will the results differ? Of course, they will differ because of the price feedback coming from the market model, but how much they will differ, we will see that in the, in the scenarios that we will do. And <clears throat> just to give a feedback, a bit of uh, microeconomics to get a feeling what is happening in Capri. So here you can see we have three different function, production function, cost function, and supply function. And um, how the yield shock that we will impose goes from the production function into the supply and demand that uh, in Capri. So here on the left-hand side, you have a normal concave production function, which is, a, which is uh, related to given quantity and input. So for, for this scenario, we will only shock and increase the yields or the produced quantities, but the input <coughs> will remain constant. So what does the refers for the production function? It means that when we keep the input constant, the quantities will increase. So this production function, given that it depends on input, if the inputs, let's say nitrogen as one input, uh, as one of the important input for production function, uh, we multiply by a given price, I don't know, one euro per, per kilogram, then this becomes a, a cost function. And this cost function is basically more or less equivalent as the production function, but just mirrored because it's a, it's a relation of costs and quantities. So given that we don't change the, the costs or the input, that we don't change the input, the cost function basically shifts to the right, given the, the change in quantity. And uh, uh, taking the first derivative for, uh, um, of uh, this cost function with respect to quantities. Uh, this is the, the marginal cost, which is equivalent to the supply function in the supply and demand system. So the yield shock, which drives the, the change in quantity, which is actually equivalent here, also in the cost function, will be transferred or mirrored also in the supply and demand. So when we run a scenario without the market model where the price, there is no price feedback and the price is fixed, we will expect to have a shift also in the quantity given the, the change in the marginal costs or, the, margin, or the, the cost function. But when we run with the supply, with the market model together, given the price feedback, we should expect uh, a lower price because now there will be a more more um, 
produced and, and sell quantities on the market. So given that there is more production, you would expect a small uh, a price reduction. So that means still the supply curve will shift, but it will shift to a, to a lower, lower equilibrium point. So the quantity will be smaller and how much this quantity will be smaller depends on the on the slope curve or the calibration of this uh, supply function. So how this enters in Capri? Well, the first thing that you have to do is that you have to define uh, the scenario. And for that, you will have to do in, uh, in the policy editor that Maria will will show you, will, showing you in the first day. And uh, for these scenarios, uh, we do a simple assumption. We increase the yields for soft wheat only by 30%. And this uh, yield increase <coughs> can come from any technological change, I don't know, genetics being more resistant to, to environmental factors and affect anything is just a simple assumption. So, and this shock, you should, it's mainly comes through these four different position that uh, are used to, to transfer the shock, like change factor, absolute change, absolute level and percentage change. So given that uh, the yields in absolute value differ a lot between member states or even nuts to region, the simplest way is just to shock through the change factor or percentage change, which is equivalent. So for this, we will do change factor 1.3. And this shock, as you see, it goes into the data parameter and it's the for all production activity and yields multiplied by the by the change factor so the 30 percent increase is actually multiply for all production activities all countries and yields and that goes into the data cube and this is done in the file shift yields uh, Country, country specific, uh, here it's for all countries and all regions, but that can be changed depending on your, how you define the scenario. And this, uh, sorry, you can see here it's done on this Y position and this Y position is just fixing it to the, to the simulation year, depending for which year you would like to work. And where this uh, shock is actually going going later on, well, you can see later on, it actually goes into the quadratic function. Actually, well, it actually goes into the, first it goes into the supply balance. So, Here, the shock that go, the shock that previously we saw in the sh shift yield, it's embedded into this parameter, and this shock it's actually multiplied with the activity level or the number of hectares in a specific region for for soft wheat, soft wheat in this case, and this multiplication should should have to be equal with all the net put quantities or all the sales and purchases that comes for soft wheat. And this supply balance, actually this net put quantities from the, from the supply balance are embedded in the linear objective function, which is the, the key, key parameter in, in the supply model of Capri which are multiplied with the prices. But remember the prices in, in this case, when you run only the supply model, it's fixed. 
and when you run with the market model, it's uh, it changes depending on the market feedback. And the, as you remember from the session with Maria Blanco, the linear objective functions, it's embedded also in the quadratic objective function where the PMP terms comes into play. So is it that? what are the expectations from this yield shock or from this uh, scenario? First, as we said, the first thing is that yields will change. Second thing that we expect to change is of course the supply, but how much that depends on, uh, on which, which scenario or depends on if you run with or without the market model. Of course, we said price will also change when you run with the market model, but there are other things that will change depending on the, on the exercise. So given that <clears throat> uh, when you run with market model, given that there is, there will be a, there, well, there will be an incentive by the farmers to, that the yields are increasing, there will be an incentive by the farmers to produce more of soft wheat. That means that they will have to optimize and change the management practices and uh, produce less of other activities. So that means that uh, the demand for mineral fertilizer use by that activities will have to change, will have to decline. And then there will be also an impact on the or the demand will decline. So there will be an impact on the on prices and, and that will have a recursive effect on overall mineral fertilizer use for in the regions. Given that you produce more, there will be an effect on global warming. And of course, there will be an effect on, on farm income. So what is expected from you, you will be, again, divided in the same groups as before. You will have to run the scenario and fill out the quiz at the end, which is provided at the end of this presentation. And at the end, provide one or two slides, additional results in addition to the quiz related to the income, production, environmental indicators, like the global warming potential or the emissions, and trade in case you're running with the market model. You should also indicate one group member of the group that will present the work and the presentation just to give a chance to everybody to, to present. You should aim for two or five minutes maximum per presentation per group. So uh, as we said, the assumption is that we will focus on 30% increase of soft wheat but uh, to make things uh, run faster because of the time constraint, we will focus on Germany. So when you run the supply model, when you run only with the supply model, you should run only for Germany. So as I said, you should define your scenario uh, using the policy editor or if you prefer to do it on your own in a, any of the editors, GAMS editors, that's also fine. Run the scenario with Germany, prove that the yield shock was correctly translated into the model. For that, you can always go to the node table view and go and search for the positions like the, for the change factor and soft wheat and yield. You should also run it, if you decide, you should also run it with the market model. And in this case, you should all run for all countries. If you like, there is an option to apply the shock only to Germany. And for that, there is a hint, you can use the map, map RR set, which is located in the set GMS. You can see how the map it's, it's done. and fill the, the quiz or the close at the end of the presentation. 
So here is the, the questions that you should answer and the additional uh, information that we, we require to produce or to present. Um, also keep in mind some of the relevant table that you should see uh, uh, look into the GUI. So for the supply and the hectares and income and the yields, you should look into the farm and the supply details. And for the price changes, you should go into the price table and focus on the producer prices. So thank you very much. And we continue with the work.